Hey everyone, it's Thomas. As you can see, I'm driving down to Tucson, going to meet Gary Pantilla, going to Big Unit Barbell. He's going to show me the gym, give me a little tour. He's going to take me through a deadlift session, talk about powerlifting, and just see everything the gym has to offer. Alright, here we are, giving a little tour. There's Gary. As you can see when you walk in, this place is just absolutely awesome. To your left over here, you got the dumbbells, got the fans going, there's no AC. Um, glued ham device, abs, you got lat pull down machine, you got your deadlift platforms, your benches, squat racks. This place is seriously just awesome. A great atmosphere to train in. Got all the trees, so many different kinds of bars. You got bands, you got belts. Everything that you could possibly need is in here. It started with this unit and this unit over here. The reason I can remember that is because the power that came in, we had an outlet right here. So we started with just these two units, and then as the membership grew, we went that way. The person in that unit moved out, and the facility said if I wanted to take the wall down, I could do it. So I took the wall down over here, moved all the dumbbells over to here, put more mats in, put another fan in. Thank God there was an outlet over there, so at least there was a, we could, you know, have a light in the fan. Yeah. Uh, moved the reverse hyper over to here. I found a guy up in Phoenix selling this glue ham. I drove up to Phoenix, bought that, and uh, came back with the decline app chair. Thought I was just gonna go up with that, and you know, it's kind of funny, you don't need a whole lot of stuff, you just need functional stuff. Yeah. So you need an adjustable bench, you need a flat bench, or you can get away with just one bench. Move the dumbbells over, kind of make this the area where you want to do some dumbbell work, or if I want to work with some personal trained clients, I can do it over here. And then the powerlifting can take place over here. So when I expanded, moving to the right, about a month later, I went all the way over to the left. And I only have these two platforms. So I built another platform over here. Built this platform here. Put the ER wrap on it. And then put some units trying to kind of hang up the belts and wraps and uh, bands. Just kind of tried to make it so that this was the powerlifting area of the yeah. gym. So if people wanted to lift heavy, they could do it over here all day long and I could be over there working with people doing yeah. personal training. I uh, built some more stuff along the way. I uh, built this rack to hold these weights. Built some uh, blocks to do 11 inch block pulls. Wasn't a big fan of rack pulling, seemed to always end up hurting my elbows. So I built these blocks and do block pulls and then went and got some more mats from the feet store and cut them up yeah. so they'd fit over the blocks and I could build the heights of the blocks I wanted. You know, and, and as time went on, I would say after my year and a half of being here, I had all four of these bays. So I had this one, this one, and then those two. And we've been here three years, and this is about as big as it's going to get. How many people normally come to the gym on a regular basis? When it's busy, what I would consider busy, there would be about ten people. Ten people? Okay. be me doing some personal training, maybe over in the corner, and there will be six to eight people powerlifting, you know, doing deadlifts, doing a bench doing squats, something. Yeah. Good thing about having an ER rack is you can pull the bench out and just squat over there. Yes. Or pull the bench out, move the safety squatters out and your deadlifts over there if you yeah. need to. So ours, I have a total of 20 members. Mm -hmm. And when it's busy, I would say probably 10 are here from four to seven o'clock at night. Yeah. Uh, I don't ever foresee it getting bigger. I prefer it not to get any bigger. Because yeah. then it'll be uh, a lot more of a headache to deal with. Yeah. But 20 is 20 is good considering there are other gyms in town that do support powerlifting yeah. and heavy lifting. You know, there's an LA Fitness across the street. You can't do deadlifts over yeah. here. So I do them here all day long. Yeah. All right, this is me warming up, 135. 
Gary's gonna give me some tips here. Sorry for the bad camera angle here. So instead of hyper extending back, just stand up and drive your hips forward to drop your chin down. Okay. So stand straight up, drive your hips forward, drop your chin down. Yeah, right there. A lot better. A lot better. There's no extension. As yeah. soon as you pull that head up, you're going to break the lockout. Okay. It's one thing to, to try to drive your hips forward by pulling your head back. Yeah. But it's another when you're at the top and then you hyper extend and you break the lock of the knees. Yeah. So just keep the head down. Just keep your keep your chin up, your eyes straight out in front of you, maybe even ten feet out in front yeah. of you or something. And as soon as you come up, drive the hips forward and drop the chin down and hold. Okay. Yes. Yep, that's it. Good. Good. Good job. Yeah, it feels a lot better. <laughs> that lock has a point to Like I said. Yeah, and that's really going to throw you off when you go ahead. Here's another 225 warm up for three. Do your three? Yeah. <laughs> we go with 315 for three. turns on you a bit. Like yeah. You really get torqued. So that's going to cause you a lot of hip and back problems with you. I'm noticing some back issues lately. So a lot of that has to do with how you're positioning in the pool. Okay. So maybe instead of not going down and grabbing this one and trying to yeah. pull into this one, maybe you need to go down, set this one, and then pull the right one after you set the left one. Okay, so set the left one. So you can that. center your body a bit more so you don't end up one, having this hand out too far over and this hand in too close, yeah. you got a fighting chance to at least get them centered and okay. start to pull. Because as you go heavy, the heavier you get closer to your max, you're yeah. going to miss those heavy pulls if you're off at all. Yeah. You're either going to miss them or you're going to get hurt. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, you don't want to do that. Yeah. So let's do this next one. Let's grip it with the left. Let's get you outside the comfort zone. Okay. Grip it with the left. On your hand grip left? Yeah, okay. you, that's how you have it now. No, right? I have it. Okay, right. so let's go. Let's keep it the same. Okay. Grip it, grip it. So grip with the left. Okay. Yes, grip with the left first. Then get into a position and then pull. Okay. Do you want me to do 315 or both? No. All right, here's 405. It's a little awkward with the belt for me. I've been having a lot of trouble trying to find a comfortable away. position. So I'm spending a lot of time in the hole just trying to get comfortable. Alright, we got 495 here. Starting to get a little closer to my max. programs for people. Uh, 
I have about 10 members here that I write the programs for. Mm -hmm. So they come in, pull out their notebook per se, pull out their book, you know, they'll, if it's Monday night, they'll pull out, they'll find Monday night, they'll have a list of stuff they have to do, and then they go do it. I may not be in here watching them, I may be over here doing personal training, but I keep track of their power looking through their notebooks through the programs. I have people that I write programs for here and then I have people online that I write programs for. I have people, I have lifters in Australia that I write programming for. I have people that I've written programs for all over the United States via uh, spreadsheets, mm -hmm. Word documents, emails. Yeah. Uh, people either email me through the gym, Big Unit Barbell, find me on uh, Facebook, and they'll message me and say, "Hey, I want to, I want a program. Yeah. What's it going to cost?" And I'll say, "You know, hundred bucks a month, and I'll write your program. I'll watch all your videos. Whatever, you know, I'll, I'll go to meets and help you if I yeah. if they're nearby, if I can. I'm always looking for power lifters that are serious about programming. Yeah, that don't have an ego." Yeah. that are willing to not lift heavy all the time because there is something to be said about not lifting heavy all the time and then knowing when to turn it on and peak for meat at the right time. Yeah. So what would be some tips you'd give to beginners in the sport looking to get into competitive power lifting? What are some of the mistakes they make and what are some of the pitfalls they can avoid um, with your experience? Having a plan. So. If you're doing a meet and you're getting into powerlifting, you gotta have a plan. You gotta have a realistic plan. You know, if, if you wanna squat 100 pounds at the meet, but realistically you're only squatting 50 pounds, that's not a plan. That's wishful thinking. Yeah. So, my advice to people is set some goals that are realistic. Get with somebody that, that understands powerlifting and what judges look for at a meet to make sure that you're on par with your plan. So if you're gonna squat 100 pounds, that you can at least squat 95% of that, parallel or below parallel, depending on the federation. Uh, powerlifters today seem to get caught up in how much they can max all the time, and that's not necessarily a good thing. It's what can you move efficiently, setting up a training pro program, and then going and executing the program at the meet. So there's preparing for the meet, and then there's getting to the meet and having a plan. Yeah. If you're gonna, if your goal is to squat 100 pounds, you don't open at 90. Maybe you might open at 50, and then go to 75, and then shoot for 100 on your third attempt. Because most federations that I know of give you three attempts. Now, where it gets a little bit tricky, you'll see some of the advanced lifters who are going after big totals, they don't always waste their time with the temps that are way below what they need to to get to their goal. Let's say, uh, let's say a guy's trying to total 2,000. He may take three shots at squatting 750 or 800. He may take three shots at benching 500, mm -hmm. you know, versus opening 100 to 150 pounds below what he wants. There are different ways that you can go about getting your total in meat, and I don't suggest taking three shots and going at it. I would save a little, make a jump, and then prepare for your third attempt. And I would train that way in the gym as well. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of a lot of things you can't control in meat besides the judging or the variables of like, let's say you're putting knee wraps on. Have you used your knee wraps before? Uh, do you wrap yourself? Who's going to wrap you? If you're lifting raw, do you have a backup singlet in case yours gets ripped or torn? Uh, do you have your belt set the way you want? Are you cutting weight? I'm not a big fan of getting into powerlifting and just doing things for the first time. You know, if you're 15 pounds over your weight class, you're not cutting your weight class. You're just going to stay there. Why throw? weight cutting into powerlifting when you're new. It's another variable that could get you away from what you want to get for your goals. So, I think as long as you have a plan and you're working with somebody that'll help you see your plan through, you should be successful. I mean, it's, it's just lifting weights. It's, it's not complicated, right? I mean, 
the hardest part is keeping your nerves at a meet. Now my advice to anybody who's doing a meet for the first time, take a deep breath before you get on the platform, see the lift through and then just go do it. Wait for your commands and just execute the lift. Don't overthink it. If you get red lighted for something or a thumbs down for something, go ask the judges why. Approach them when, they, when you can and say, you know, what did you see that I didn't get the lift for? And, and most of them will tell you. They'll say, you know, you were just a bit too high or you let the bar sink on your chest when he gave you the press command or one arm came up uneven. You know, communicate with the referees. And if, if the Federation doesn't allow it before the meet or during the meet, after the meet, go to them and say, you know, did you get a chance to watch any of my lifting? What could you tell me that I could improve? Because chances are most referees are good lifters or were good lifters at one point. That's kind of the thing that I like about the USPA is that a lot of the lifters at the national level, world level, level, they are that quality referee. So you do get a lot of consistency with the USPA. I want to send a big thank you to Gary for having me out in Tucson. I learned so much today, and I'm definitely going to make it back out. Here's Gary with the last few words. Yeah, this is uh, Gary Pansola with Big Unit Barbell. Check us out on our, check out our website, BigUnitBarbell.com, and we've got a Facebook page, Big Unit Barbell, on Facebook.